All right, well, here we are again. This one isn't going to be nearly. I mean, the last one was crazy and, and didn't look like it was organized. Well, this one's way, way worse. And I don't know why my lighting is so bad. Whether, anyway, it doesn't matter because you're not going to look at me anyway. I thought uh, before we uh, get into some serious rants, and, I, <laughs> and anybody that knows me knows I have a lot of them, that I'd like to get some of, some of my uh, artwork out of the way because a couple of people asked, asked to see some more. What I did once was I, I used to do craft shows, and I was a wholesaler in, in craft stuff, and then I, I figured I, it wasn't fair for me to compete with people that I was selling stuff to, so I stopped doing shows altogether. But I had a lot of demand uh, for gourds, so I decided one year to raise gourds, and it turned out I ended up with hundreds of them. And so uh, I'm always thinking big and never doing anything big. So I decided to call myself World Renowned Gourds. So I put a sign out front, and uh, and then the big big trick was was how to dry them. Uh, and I'll get into that maybe someday if anybody's interested. But I want to I want to show some of the stuff I did with them. And in three years, uh, this was just a sideline. I only had three people stop and ask about gourds, and I ended up giving all three of them whatever gourds they wanted. So it wasn't one of my money makers uh, and seldom do I have one of them anyway but I'd like to show you uh, just some of the stuff that I've done with gourds we'll start out real simple uh, this is a octopus I hope I hope everybody you know I hope it's well enough done <laughs> that, that people can figure can figure that out give them a, a good look at you <clears throat> now I do this oh here's the crazy thing this is a snake that I painted let's see so I did I did a number of these gave a couple of them away Here's another one. Now, what I do when I store the, if I, I have them, the demon, uh, you know, sitting around here, I put the two of them together here, like, like this, like they're fighting. I'll put these up here out of the way for now. That's where they usually are, anyway. Now, the thing with gorgeous, you have to be careful, is they're almost as as brittle as ceramics. And it, it uh, doesn't look like much, but it does take a lot of time to do this. I did a couple in which I, I did patterns. And you say, oh, well, anybody can do a pattern. But to get the pattern to fit on the gourd properly, it's not, you know, I mean, it, it's, it sounds easy. And I'm sure anybody could do it if they took the time. But you got to work out uh, a few little geometric things. I did a couple of those. This is one of my favorite because if you stare at it, then you're not sure if those things go in or they go out. I mean, you can imagine them coming out and you can imagine them going in. This is one of my more, um, one of my favorites. And I did a thing called this. Well, this I consider ocean ocean foam and it's just a, a nice little like voice paper voice paper thing but that you know you, I guess you can't appreciate these unless you've done one it takes a little uh, time to paint that mm -hmm. and here's one a bigger trash thing matter of fact it has my my total collection of copper in it <laughs> mm -hmm. Just an undersea thing, and I used the I used the netting, the netting to make it, you know, just to keep the top looking nice. And I'm going to save that one because I think that's one of my best. I make little things like this that uh, they're like voice papers baskets. Uh, sometime, if anybody's interested, I can talk to them on the side about the nature of the gourds. Uh, you know, if, if you want them 
if you want them to roll the top when you cut them and stuff like that it's a little uh, it's a little more detailed than most people think and, and I found the gourd book was just absolutely stupid they told me they told me that on many cases that these big a gourd this size would take up to 18 months to dry and definitely a year now I said I can I've never had patience so I said I ain't waiting a damn year so I what I did was they come with a waxy coating on them and the waxy coating if you scrape it off with a sharp object and then I, I just said screw it and put them in that's so they breathe uh, I put them in a greenhouse put a giant fan on them and this baby was dry in a week and take the books and and how nobody in 4,000 years figured that out is beyond me. <laughs> now, a friend of mine does a lot of fishing, and he was a fishing nut, so he asked me to, to do a, a largemouth bass for him. So I painted this. Maybe some of these probably look better back at a distance. So I put this baby, this baby, painted this baby up and gave him gave him one for his birthday and then uh, decided to do one for myself and I did a series of, there's a little bird one and I did a series of, of shells that I called uh, that I called uh, uh, my seashell series. This is the biggest, and if you look at them, if you look at it long enough, then the, each these things begin to get some depth to them. But it's a thing that, that you really you really have to stare at to enjoy. But I did a whole mess of them. This is a Macarac. This is a different, altogether a different type of gourd, and it's uh, basically uh, uh, grown in Japan. But I, I had some seeds, and I did some, and I thought that really went well with the with the uh, motif, with the shell motif. Then I did a mosaic, one of of a. Uh, of a lily and a bud, a lily bud. And this is just a black eyed Susan. Supposed to be viewed, I guess, like this. Another one of those Macarac ones, shells. Another shell one. As you see, I like the shell one. Then I did a couple people wanted. Oh, here's another pattern, pattern one that I sort of like. Oh, it has a couple flowers on it. There's a couple black eyed Susans. I did a number of these. Most of these, most of the flower ones I've given away over the years. I haven't done any gourds in, I don't know, 10, 10 or more years. And I did some Indian basket type things. And this one here 
and here's my junk basket for mail but this one the cabana boy you'll see him sometime soon this is his favorite this is very it, it looks simple but it's very complicated because you have to do all the cutouts and each one of these little holes you have to put in beforehand and you have to know what your design's going to be and then and then you paint it but you always run the problem of getting way down to the very last cut and having the whole thing crack on you and I was very fortunate that this didn't but this this although I'm sure it doesn't look like it, this took a very long very long time and you're sweating you're sweating all the time that any little thing you do to that could break that now I don't want to make this too long so I'll we'll get down to my two favorites and this this is a a local native fish species let me see if I can get the, some good light on them this is a, what they would call bluegill uh, I should have I hate to put a flashlight on but maybe that'll work I think this is one of my nicer ones and to finish off we'll get back to Alexander the Great this was my the very first one I did this first on this gourd I wanted to make it look like a mosaic that was chipping and falling apart on the edges and stuff on this big gourd and then I was so happy with this you can maybe see the detail a little better that I ended up with this <laughs> so I hope I didn't bore you too much and I seem to have gone on longer than I probably should have but I like to get all the I like to get the art stuff out first and and then go into my crazy rants and crap and next time maybe I'll show you the art and then I want to do one quick one on fossils and then we'll get back strictly to silver which when I look last was up 70 cents so have a nice day, everybody, and thank you very much for watching.